Okay, so have you ever thought about like how AI is kind of everywhere these days? Yeah, it's hard to miss, right? Like your streaming service? Yeah. It totally seems to know what you want to watch next, even before you do. Right, or your shopping app. Like it always puts your favorite snacks right there on the home screen. Yeah, exactly. It's wild. <laughs> but uh, what happens when... AI starts making decisions that impact something as big as, you know, your education? That's a really good question. It's something we need to be thinking about, especially because AI is being used more and more in higher education. Right. And, you know, it's being used to, like, help students succeed and stuff, which is great. Absolutely. But as with, you know, any powerful tool, there is a potential downside. Yeah, for sure. There can be some, like, unintended consequences. And that's, you know, what we're going to be unpacking today, right? Yeah, definitely. We're looking at this paper from the EG Cause Student Success Analytics Community Group. Oh, yeah, I've seen this one. These are like experts who are really on the front lines of, you know, using data in education to help students. They're doing some really important work. Yeah, so they put together this uh, really thoughtful piece, I think, about the ethical implications of AI in education. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like some far off thing, right? Uh, no, not at all. We're talking about real systems that are being used you know, right now in schools and colleges all over. Yeah, and uh, that's why it's so critical to understand the potential risks. Yeah, for sure. So I guess before we dive in, let's maybe get to know the folks behind this paper a little bit. Yeah, that's a good idea. They come from a really diverse set of backgrounds. Yeah, they do. It's like a lot of different perspectives on the table. Yeah, and I think that makes the paper even more valuable. Yeah, totally. So uh, we have um, Maureen Guarcello. Oh, yeah, from San Diego State, right? Yep, San Diego State University. She focuses on um, research and analytics there. Right. Then there's Linda Feng. She's, uh, she's got more of a technical perspective, you know. Yeah. She's a principal software architect at um, Unicon. Right. And then we've got uh, Sharir Panahi, who leads um, all things data and analytics at the University of Massachusetts. Okay. And uh, Simon Makarjewski from the University of Illinois at Chicago. What does he do? He works on learning technologies and uh, instructional innovation. And uh, Marcy Ham rounds out the group. She's a learning analytics consultant at The Ohio State University. Wow, that's an impressive group. They definitely know what they're talking about. Oh, yeah, for sure. And their main message is something that, you know, all of us, and especially uh, anyone involved in education, should really care about. Yeah. They're saying that AI used for student success has the potential to um, be discriminatory. Unintentionally discriminatory, yeah. Right. It's a really important distinction because, yeah. like, nobody's setting out to create a system that's going to disadvantage certain students. No, of course not. Yeah. But it's like, you know, with any tool, you can use it the wrong way. Yeah, or even if you're trying to use it the right way, there might be some unforeseen consequences. Right. It's like a, it's like a hammer. Okay. You can use a hammer to build a house, but you could also use it to, you know, cause damage. Mm. It all depends on, you know, the skill of the person using it. Yeah, that's true. AI is the same way. I see what you mean. In the right hands, with careful design, it can be incredibly powerful for helping students succeed. Right. But if we're not careful, it could end up disadvantaging some students. And that's what we have to watch out for. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I hadn't even, like, thought about how much... AI is probably already being used in education. Yeah, it's a lot more common than people realize. It makes you wonder, you know, what the impact is or could right. be. Right, and that's one of the things that this paper does a really good job of highlighting. Okay, so tell me more about that. So they actually give some specific examples of how AI is being used. Okay, so what kind of things are we talking about here? Well, like uh, personalized learning platforms. Okay, for those. And um, early warning systems. Early warning systems. Yeah, th these are systems that, you know, try to identify students who might be at risk of, you know, dropping out or not doing well. Oh, okay. And um, even chatbots that, you know, can answer student questions 2347. Wow, so it's pretty diverse, the stuff that it's being used for. Yeah, it really is. Those sound, like, pretty helpful on the surface, mm -hmm. uh, you know? Yeah, they can be. So where does the potential for discrimination come in? Well, one of the, I think biggest concerns is data gaps. Data gaps. So like missing information. Yeah, basically AI systems learn from the data that they're given. But what if the data itself is incomplete or biased? That's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, and that's something this paper really stresses. Like what about the students whose data isn't captured for whatever reason? Mm -hmm. 
The paper raises a really good question. What happens to the students who kind of fall through the cracks? Exactly. And uh, that's where bias can become a real problem. Okay. Yeah. If an AI system is trained on data, like let's say mostly from, you know, students who are already successful. Okay. It might misinterpret or even harm students from different backgrounds or, you know, with unique circumstances. So even if the, like, the intention is good, the system could still end up making things worse for some students. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the worry. Wow. That's pretty disturbing, actually. And the paper actually cites a, uh, a pretty concerning finding from an AG Hawes quick poll. Oh, really? What's that? It turns out that a lot of higher education professionals don't even fully understand how AI is being used at their own institutions. Mm, really? Wow. That's uh, it's kind of alarming. It is. It raises some uh, some red flags, I think, about oversight and the potential for you know things to go wrong. Yeah, for sure. If the people in charge don't even understand how these systems work, how can they make sure that they're being used ethically and responsibly? Right. It's like um, it's like ordering a hamburger not knowing. Like, what ingredients are in it? I like that. Yeah, it's a good analogy. I mean, maybe there's nothing harmful in there, but maybe there is, right? Exactly. And that leads to another uh, another key point from the paper, this need for something they call data democracy. Data democracy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm intrigued. What is that? It's basically about empowering more people, faculty, students, administrators to really understand and use data responsibly. Okay, so not just leaving it to the tech people. Right. It's about making sure that everyone has a basic understanding of data and its limitations. That makes sense. Imagine being able to, you know, actually see the data that's being used to make decisions about your education. Mm -hmm. Being able to ask questions about how it was collected, analyzed, and really have a voice in, you know, how AI is being used. That's a really powerful idea. It kind of puts the focus on, like, transparency and accountability. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, seems crucial when we're dealing with something as impactful as AI. Exactly. And the paper goes on to uh, outline three key components of this data democracy idea. Okay, I'm all ears. What are they? Data literacy, data accessibility, and data science adoption. And we can dive into those a bit more. Yeah, let's do that. So how do we, you know, use this AI hammer responsibly? Mm. How do we get to that data democracy? Mm -hmm. I'm ready to hear more about all of that and... Um, you know, how we can make sure that AI is actually a force for good in education. Okay, so let's start with data literacy. Huh. So data literacy is, you know, it's all about making sure everyone in education, you know, they really understand what data is telling us, its yeah. limitations and, you know, the potential for bias. Right, so it's not just like knowing how to read a chart or a graph. No, it's bigger than that. It's about understanding like the context behind the data. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. about being able to like ask those critical questions yeah. like, you know, where did this data come from? You know, yeah. who collected it? Could there be any biases, you know, baked into how it was collected or interpreted? Yeah, that's a good point. All those things. Yeah, we can just take numbers at face value, especially when they're being used to make decisions that could, you know, really impact students' lives. Absolutely. And then, you know, you've got data accessibility. Okay, so that's the second one, right? Yep, that's number two. Okay. And this is about, like, making the data itself available to, you know, more people. So not just, like, locking it away in some server room. No, not at all. Where only, like, you know, a few data scientists could even access it. Exactly. Yeah. Transparency is key here. Yeah, well, when right. data is accessible to faculty, students, administrators, you know, even the broader community, mm. it just, it allows for more scrutiny, yeah. more analysis, more accountability. I can see how that would, you know, help to prevent bias from sneaking in. Yeah, for sure. More eyes on the data yeah. means more opportunities to catch potential problems. Exactly, exactly. Okay, cool. And then, you know, the last piece of the puzzle is data science adoption. Okay, this is number three. Yeah, data science adoption. Okay. And this doesn't mean that everyone needs to become a data scientist, you know? Right. But it does mean having, like, you know, those experts on hand who can really guide the ethical and responsible use of AI in education. So these are the folks who can help, like, you know, design those systems right. that are fair and equitable from the very beginning. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. They can help institutions, you know, choose the right tools, implement them responsibly mm. and just, you know, constantly be evaluating their impact to make sure they're serving all students fairly. That makes sense. Yeah. It sounds like we need, you know, like a whole new way of thinking about data in education. Yeah. It's a shift for sure. It's not just about like 
crunching numbers anymore. No, it's not. It's about using data ethically. Right. And, you know, giving people the tools to actually understand its power. I think that's a great way to put it. Yeah. The authors of this paper are really advocating for, like, you know, a shift in mindset. Yeah. It's like, we need to move away from this idea of data as, you know, like a tool for control or surveillance mm. and move towards a more democratic approach where data is used to, you know, empower and support students. Yeah. And that's where it gets really interesting to me, I think. Yeah. The paper talks about how bias can actually sneak in at, like, you know, different stages of the AI process. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Even if nobody means for it to happen. Right. It's not just about the data itself. It's also about like how it's collected, analyzed, and then, you know, how it's ultimately used to make decisions. Right. For example, they talk about something called uh, algorithmic bias. Okay. And that's when, you know, the algorithm itself is actually designed in a way that like perpetuates existing inequalities. So it's like the algorithm has its own biases. In a way, yeah. That's that's a scary thought. It is, and it can be really tough to detect. Yeah. Because it's often like you know, hidden within the code. Right. That's why it's so important to have data scientists who really understand these like complexities, you know, and who can design systems that are, you know, fair and transparent from the ground up. The paper actually gives some like specific examples of how this might actually show up in, you know, like a real school or college setting. Yeah. And one that really stood out to me was this idea of sample bias. Uh, yes, sample bias. What is that? Sample bias is, uh, it's a classic problem in data analysis. Okay. It happens when, you know, the data you're using to train your AI system, hmm. it's not actually representative of the entire population you're trying to understand. So, like... If you only surveyed students who got A's on the exam, you'd miss out on insights from those who struggled, right? Exactly. You wouldn't get a full picture. Exactly. How students are doing. You'd get a very skewed view, yeah. Okay. And in the context of AI in education, sample bias could mean that, you know, the data used to throw the AI system, mm -hmm. it primarily comes from students who are, you know, already succeeding. Okay. And that can be a real problem because then the system might misinterpret or even disadvantage students who come from, you know, different backgrounds or mm -hmm. who have, you know, unique learning needs. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's like... Uh, it's like trying to navigate a maze, but you only have, like, half the map. I like that. Right? Yeah. You're bound to like, you know, run into a dead end. Exactly. Like it highlights the importance of having, you know, diverse data sets mm -hmm. that really reflect, you know, the full range of student experiences. Right. Okay. Yeah. So sample bias. Yeah. Another kind of bias the paper mentions is um, prejudice bias. Yeah. Prejudice bias. That's a big one. And that sounds, um, you know, even more concerning to me. It is. Yeah. Prejudice bias is really concerning because it reflects, you know, societal biases mm -hmm. that can be really, like, deeply ingrained in our data. Right. So, like, historical data might already contain biases against, you know, certain racial or socioeconomic groups. Exactly. And if you use that data to train an AI, yeah. you know, it's just going to make those biases even worse, right? That's right. It can actually perpetuate those biases. Yeah. And that's uh, that's one of the reasons why data literacy is so important. Uh -huh. We need to be aware of these potential biases and then, you know, actively work to mitigate them mm -hmm. when we're designing and implementing AI systems. Yeah, it's like that saying, garbage in, garbage out. Exactly. <laughs> you put garbage in, you get garbage out. If you feed an AI system biased data, you're going to get biased results. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So we've talked about data literacy, data accessibility, yeah. and you know having data scientists who understand all this stuff involved in the process. Mm. But what about the students? Oh, that's a great question. What role do they play in all of this? That's such an important point, and the paper actually touches on that too. Oh, good. They argue that you know students should really be empowered to understand how AI is being used in their education. Right. Right. And they should have a voice in shaping its development. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's about giving students agency and control over their own data. Yeah. Right? Imagine a system where students can actually see, like, what data is being collected about them. Yeah. How it's being used and even, like, you know, have the option to opt out yeah. of certain data collection practices, you know, if they have concerns. That would be a huge step towards, you know, building trust and transparency, I think. It would. And it would also create, like, amazing opportunities for students to learn about you know, data science and AI themselves. Right. They could even 
be involved in like, you know, designing and developing AI systems oh, wow. that are more responsive to their needs. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. It sounds like, you know, a total win-win. I think so. Students gain valuable data literacy skills. Yep. And institutions benefit from, you know, like their insights and perspectives. Exactly. And ultimately, it's all about creating, you know, like a more equitable and just education system mm -hmm. where all students have the opportunity to succeed. Right. Okay. So that's the goal. Yeah. So how do we actually, you know, put all of this into practice? That's the million dollar question. Yeah. What are like some concrete steps that schools and colleges can take to make sure that AI is being used fairly? Well, the paper offers, well, the paper offers some, you know, pretty practical recommendations. Okay, good. It starts by, you know, encouraging institutions to just really think critically about the data they're collecting. Okay. And why. So it's not just about, like, you know, gathering as much data as possible. Yeah. It's about being more, like, intentional. Right. Thoughtful. Yeah. About what data is really valuable and how it's being used. Exactly. Okay. And they also emphasize the importance of, like, developing clear guidelines and policies, you know, mm. for the ethical use of AI in education. So, like, kind of like a set of rules. Yeah, you could think of it that way. Or, like, how AI can and can't be used when it comes to student data. Precisely. Yeah. Okay. These guidelines could address things like, you know, data privacy, mm -hmm. transparency, accountability, and, you know, bias mitigation. It sounds like um, a lot of work, honestly. It is. It is a lot of work. But I think it's essential work. Right. And the good news is the paper actually, like, points to some really helpful resources. Okay, that's good. That institutions can, like, leverage, you know? Okay, so what kind of things are we talking about here? Well, for example, there's this... Uh, AI Fairness 360 Toolkit. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Provides a ton of tools for, you know, evaluating and mitigating bias in AI systems. So that could help, like, you know, identify potential problems before they actually harm students. Exactly. That's the goal. Okay. And they also highlight um, the AI RFX procurement framework. Mm, I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah. So this is interesting. It's this not... can actually help institutions evaluate AI systems before they even buy them. Oh, that's smart. Right. Yeah, so it's kind of like hitting the pause button yeah. and saying, okay, hold on a second. Before we implement this, you know, fancy new AI system, mm -hmm. let's make sure it actually aligns with, you know, our values and our ethical principles and that it's not going to discriminate against our students. I like that, yeah. Okay, cool. And then there are also, like, you know, some more education-specific resources, okay. things like um, the responsible use of student data and higher education website. Okay. And uh, the EdSafe AI Alliance. Mm -hmm. So these are like, you know, organizations that are actively working to develop guidelines and best practices right. specifically for ethical AI in education. It's really encouraging to see that, you know, so many people and organizations are dedicated to making AI more equitable. It is. It gives me a lot of hope, actually, right. yeah, that we can, you know, actually harness the power of AI for good in education. Right. Like, it's not all doom and gloom. No, not at all. It's just about, you know, being aware of the potential risks. Right. And taking steps to mitigate them. Exactly. It's going to take all of us, though. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Collective effort. So to kind of, like, wrap all of this up yeah. and bring it back to, you know, you, the listener. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're a student and like your future is being shaped by algorithms. It's not that hard to imagine, actually. Right. Algorithms that are making decisions about, you know, your academic progress, your potential. Mm -hmm. Even your career path, maybe. Yeah, exactly. It's just pretty powerful stuff. What questions would you want to ask yeah. about the data that's being used to make those decisions? Right. Like, would you want to know where the data came from, how it was collected, how the algorithms work? Yeah. What biases might be baked in? These are all, like, really crucial questions that, you know, we all need to be asking. Yeah. Especially as AI becomes more and more integrated into our lives. Right. And especially in education, I think. Oh, absolutely. Like, knowledge is power. It really is. And when we understand how these systems work, we can, you know advocate for fairness, challenge bias, mm. and make sure that technology is actually serving humanity. Right. Not the other way around. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. This paper has given us a lot to think about, that's for sure. It really has. But it's really, you know, just the beginning. Mm. We need to keep these conversations going yeah. and work together to create an education system that's truly equitable and empowering for every student. 
So dive into those resources that we mentioned. Yeah, definitely check those out. Keep asking those tough questions. Mm -hmm. And let's create an education system that truly benefits everyone. That's what it's all about.